Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add carbon fiber to any substrate to give it that really nice shiny carbon fiber look. In this project, I'm going to be doing the dashboard for the Cobra. Now to get started, first you have to choose your carbon fiber. And it comes in various sizes, widths, and lengths. You can buy it 50 inches, 60 inches wide, and it comes on a roll so you can buy 30 feet of it. And it also comes in small packages uh, with smaller pieces if you want to. The first thing is you have to choose the weight. The weight of the carbon fiber is how thick it is. This is a fairly thick cloth. It could be equivalent to a really thick sheet. This is 15.8 ounces, I believe. Uh, and it's fairly flexible. It'll go over round surfaces. I've used cloth down to eight ounce cloth, which is like tissue, almost like a tissue, and it forms, it's almost invisible. So you'll see straight through it. This is also a weaved fabric and light will pass through this so the color of the substrate is going to shine through. You can buy this in different kind of weaves. That's just a pattern. I'm using something called a twill weave, but it also comes in straight weaves and other pattern weaves. Not only that, it will come in colored fabric so that you can add color to your carbon fiber as well, which is pretty neat. Then the next thing is you have to choose the resin or the epoxy you're going to put it down with. In this project, I'm using this tabletop epoxy. I've used this several times before, and I like this particular type of product because it dries just a little bit slower, so you have a little longer time to work with it, and it comes out like glass. Now, the question is how much do you need to buy? I did the dashboard, which is roughly, I'll say, say uh, 50 inches wide, maybe 45, maybe in a piece about, I don't know, 18 inches big. And I put enough resin on that dashboard, and I only need about a quart. So if you're trying to judge how much should you buy, a quart kit will be plenty. And by a quart kit, I mean a quart of resin and a quart of hardener, not half of each to equal a quart. We might get away with it for a smaller part, but my recommendation is you go and look for carbon fiber and buy a kit for small parts because it will come with a carbon fiber, it'll come with all the resins you need, it will come with mixing cups, brushes, whatever you need to do the whole project. So look into buying a kit versus buying the components separately. I bought a big sheet of carbon fiber because not only am I doing the dashboard, when I do the interior, I wanna make side panels and back panels and a few other things and I want it to all be cut from the same piece of carbon fiber so they all look the same. Now with any project, especially a finishing project, the most important part is surface preparation. So let's get started with surface preparation before we apply the carbon fiber. Sand the entire surface with 80 to 100 grit sandpaper. That's gonna provide a good surface for the material to bond to. Then I sprayed on a coat of black epoxy. That is going to provide a surface for the epoxy to bond to and a backdrop in case light goes through the fabric. Next, wipe down the entire surface with isopropyl alcohol to make sure it's grease free and wipe it down with a tack cloth to make sure there aren't any particles left on the surface. Then mix up your epoxy. This epoxy is mixed one to one by volume. Don't do it by weight because if you do it by weight, you might have it off because one material is heavier than the other. Mix it very slowly to make sure you minimize bubbles in the mixture. Then brush it on the surface. Go very slow, you have plenty of time to work, so brush it on evenly and get the coating all over the surface. And when it's tack free, you can lay your carbon fiber on. Lay it down as even as you can, get it centered, and let it lay down by itself. Don't force it so you don't Take the fabric and push it one direction. Now you can make sure that it's down flat. Push it and start to form it around the edges so that it gets tacky and it starts to stick. This is a good time to cut away the excess fabric so that you're not dealing with big chunks of fabric at the end. Now you can start to work it around the edges very slowly to make sure that it sticks fully around all of the edges and around each surface. For interior circles, start to trim it. Make sure you know where you're cutting. Leave enough so that it can be folded around the back. Use a pair of really sharp scissors when you're cutting out small areas. And for an area with a very tight radius, something like this where the steering column is, when you start forming it, you'll see that it'll get a little tight there. When you start forming it around, you can push that down. And all you're trying to do is get it to stick 
evenly around. Don't force it because you will make take the fabric and you will stretch it. So just gently push it down, make sure it's sticking and start to go towards the, the round areas. You'll have to cut a relief for something that's this big. If you cut a relief and as, as you start to push it down, you'll see that it starts to stick nicely and the fabric will form around those edges. Just take your time. The fabric will fold. Go gently, gently pushing with your hands and it will stick nicely and it will form perfectly just the way you want it. Then start looking towards corners. You have a flat surface, you're going to start to create corners. And the corners are where it gets tricky because you want it to overlap. When you cut a corner and you form a corner, form it from where you're looking at it so you're sure you're not leaving a seam in the wrong spot. Trim away any loose fibers that might get hung up or cause a, a snag in the fabric. So just trim it lightly to make sure you have it uh, ready for the epoxy that you're going to put on top. This helps a lot. Now for corners, cut a relief on the spot where you won't see. So fold it under as the bottom of the dashboard. I won't see that. And then you take the side piece and fold it around and make sure they stick together. You can trim the excess off just to make sure it's a nice butt joint. And then when you fold it and push it, it'll, it'll be a nice corner. You can use some tape. I'm just using some packing tape to fold around and to hold the fabric tight to the surface. Do this wherever you can. That's a, that will help make sure that when you put the next layer on, the fabric stays in place. Use as much as you want. You don't have to worry about that, but just don't pull it too hard. So again, you don't want to put a snag in the surface of the fiber. Next, pour on your first coat, and this has to be immediate while it's still sticky underneath because this is going to wet the carbon fiber and make it stick to the sticky surface underneath. Use the brush lightly, spread the epoxy out, and do it very gently, making sure that you not only get the entire surface, but you also want to make sure you get on the edges as well. Get the edges all the way down. Don't worry if it drips off the edge and it uh, has more than you need, but just make sure you get that. Then when you're done, Lightly just sort of drag the brush over the surface to even it out. It's going to flow It's going to take a couple hours So just drag it really slow and this will get rid of a majority of the bubbles now is the time for patience Let that cure overnight for at least 16 hours until that surface is completely cured The next day start working on the back side work on a soft surface and cut away all the excess material from the back Remove all the tape that you may have put on also focus on the corners any loose fibers need to be removed. With 120 grit sandpaper, sand the entire surface to make sure there are no high spots and get rid of any defects that might be on the surface. Also get the corners, make sure they are shaped with no extra fibers to look exactly how you want them. Wipe down the entire surface with isopropyl alcohol to make sure it's completely clean. Now you can apply your first finishing coat. Pour it on and again, gently spread it with a brush and get everything, the surface, and around the edges as well. The slower you move the brush, the less bubbles you're going to create. So do it slow and smooth, doing one final wipe with the entire brush. As you do this, you will see the bubbles start to go away, and the surface will smooth. This material is going to flow over time, so if you get this done within 15 minutes and leave it alone, the surface is going to flatten all by itself. But the more bubbles you get out now, the easier it's going to be in the future. When it's tack free, that means when you can touch it and it's still sticky, you leave a fingerprint but you won't remove any material, put on another coat. This is a second coat while it's sticky. Again, it has to be tack free. Go around and do the th same thing. Get the entire surface, do a nice smooth job, get all of the edges, and then leave it. Now for each finishing coat, you're going to want to get rid of all the bubbles. Make sure you have a lot of light, look at the surface, and wherever you have bubbles, you're going to get rid of it with a propane torch. Light your propane torch and move it across the surface very fast. I also use a very pointy stick. This happens to be a shish, shish kebab stick. You can use this to poke very big holes and fill it in with a little bit of epoxy because it's going to continue to flow and it'll flatten out all by itself. The key to this process is don't point the torch straight at the material and keep it moving. Do not stop in one place. Use the stick to poke any big bubbles and add a little material if needed. It will flow out. Next, using a respirator, flip it over and grind off all the excess carbon fiber. Put it on a soft surface so you don't scratch it. 
turn it over, dust it off with a tack cloth again so you don't scratch the surface. Now you can start to drill the holes for the gauges. I start with the back to put a center hole and flip it over and finish it so you put a nice clean cut into the epoxy. You can use scissors to pull out any small pieces. Then I use a die grinder with a stone on it to finish the holes out to the final diameter. This makes a lot neater hole and you reduce the risk of tearing the carbon fiber off of the substrate. It makes a very nice clean cut hole. Now I can start to put the gauges in. Put them in like you normally would. Be careful not to scratch the surface. That's why I have it resting on a nice soft towel. Tighten them up, get them all in place. Then flip it over and you start to see how it looks. It's starting to look really cool. Now I can test fit it. Put it in place, test fit it, and with some finishing washers, bolting it in place, here's the final result. It looks really cool. I love the carbon fiber look. A lot of room there for maybe an LCD screen, but the gauges really pop out with the carbon fiber. Now this kind of project is not something you can rush. You have to take your time, so plan at least three to four days to do a big part like I was doing. The first coat, you put down the sticky coat and you put the carbon fiber on, and then the first wetting coat that wets the fiber to the sticky surface underneath, that takes one day right there. Then I put on the two finishing coats. You can put as many coats as you like. You can put two coats down, let it cure overnight, sand it, keep putting coats and coats, but remember, the thinner the material, the better it's gonna be. The thicker it is, the easier it's gonna to be to crack. I have one of the pieces, These are this is one of the holes that I cut out that was one of the uh, holes for one of the gauges, I think, or yeah, I think it was, and I measured it. This is about an eighth of an inch thick. So, the carbon fiber, with the coats of resin on it is only an eighth of an inch thick. It looks a lot thicker, but really is only an eighth of an inch thick. This is something you can totally do yourself. It's not that difficult. You might try practice on a smaller part first, but this is something you can really do, produce a really nice finish and add a great aesthetic quality to your part. I think it looks awesome. I can't wait to start to make the uh, door, the, the panels for the door, and in the rear, it's gonna look really cool. Thanks for stopping by Peace Garage.